George could run toy trains and count to ten. How tough could this be? Could you repeat that? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, number seven. Number eight. A anybody understand that? I don't understand him, but I trust him. <laughs> Fast work, Station Master. Master, you did say reverse, didn't you? <laughs> Real trains were even easier than toy trains for a smart monkey. <laughs> All he had to do was simply move the number five train first. George was a great train master. The five moved into position, followed by eight, seven, nine, and six. <laughs> then six, seven, nine, eight, and five. Then seven, five, six, eight, nine. Six, nine, seven, five, eight. Five, six, eight, nine, seven. Seven, five, six, eight, nine. Five, six, eight, nine, seven, eight, seven, nine, five, six. Five, six, five, seven, five, six, eight, nine. And, and then 356? Is it just me or did that sound like a monkey? This wasn't like his toy trains anymore. George needed help. Flint was right outside comparing jelly sandwiches, unaware that a little monkey needed him. George didn't know why that warning bell wasn't going off. See, if the whole sandwiches are equal, the halves must be two, right? Thanks for holding down the floor, George. I'll take it from here. George still wanted to be a station master, but only in his own home, where he could eat a one-piece sandwich. Cutting sandwiches in half only leads to trouble. 
George couldn't recall ever seeing the man with the yellow hat looking like this. He was usually calm, cool, and wearing a yellow hat. Oh, here he comes. Hello? Good morning, come on in. Ready as promised. Ah, it was worth living without it for three long days. <laughs> I'd rather carry it myself, George. You're not gonna wear your hat? No, I, I wanna keep it perfect till tonight. We're going to the opening of the new planetarium dome. Thanks. Uh, let's get home before anything happens to my perfect clean hat. <laughs> well, we made it safely. Okay, now George, when I get back, we're going right to the planetarium, so take a bath. There'll be photographers there. I want you to look clean and fluffy. George was going to take a bath, just like he was told. Sure was a perfect hat. Who could resist trying it on? George wanted Compass to see him in the yellow hat. It'd only take a second. George saw the hat fly this way, but it disappeared. <laughs> the hat was back home and still perfect. Almost. George removed the piece of branch as carefully as any surgeon working on any yellow hat could. Okay, there was just a tiny thread there. No problem. Maybe he needed to pull harder. Or maybe it had to be cut off. George had forgotten that the last time he used his safety scissors was to cut his strawberry jam and banana sandwich. It was only a small smudge. All he had to do was clean it off. This stiff brush got the grill sparkling like new every time, and the grill got dirtier than the hat. <laughs> He may have scrubbed too hard. The apartment building where George lived was a very orderly place. And that's how Hunley liked it. 
They're here to clean your carpets. People came. And people went. The elevator arrived. And people came down the stairs. Everything in Hunley's lobby was orderly and neat. Well, almost everything. We can't go back into the apartment until the carpet is dry, George. So you stay here in the lobby while I run my errands, all right? Okay. Oh, oh, and in case you get hungry. I won't be long. Hunley didn't think George should be eating a sloppy apple in the lobby. George decided it would probably be better to eat his apples someplace else. Hunley had never been through this door before. but he was pretty sure it was against the rules to be out here. Hunley didn't think George would ever get in that way. So he'd find a better way. All right, move it along. At least there was one thing Hunley knew for certain. Home was this way. Or... Maybe that way. Hunley was getting worried. He could just imagine the terrible things that that sloppy monkey was doing to his lobby. When Hunley found his building, it was even worse than he imagined. But then Hunley saw that it wasn't his street at all. But that meant he had no idea where he was. Lots more coming. Stick around. Come on, guys. Let's go. <laughs> there was the Rinkin Silo. The river brought them back home. They weren't lost. All they had to do was stop.
it was a long way to run, but when they got to that silo, they knew they'd be completely lost. It was the wrong silo. <laughs> they were now even more lost than the lost chicks. George couldn't even find the river. Nothing looked familiar. <laughs> but there was the duck rock again. A landmark. George had an idea. They saw the big duck rock. And what else did they pass on the river? The big trees. The boat. And Rankin Silo. The sun set behind the Rankin Silo. Suddenly, they didn't feel so lost. They ran to that rock. But when they got there, it didn't look like the big duck rock. Oh. But as George walked around, <laughs> he discovered it was the big duck rock. The big trees. <laughs> they had found the next landmark. <laughs> and there was the boat. Another landmark. <laughs> if he followed the river all the way, he would find the silo. With the sun right behind it. But George realized that if he took the river all the way around, it would take too long. Hi. They could just take a shortcut and follow the sun. <laughs> this couldn't be easier. Okay, it would have been easier if they could see where they were going. They had to walk towards the sun. But how could they find it now? <laughs> it was that way. <laughs> the chicks recognized those friendly monkey feet. find those chicks in the dark. <laughs> George! <laughs> Didn't I tell you to stay at the duck pen? <gasps> oh, you brought him home! You're a hero, monkey. <laughs> George, how did you do it? After a day lost in the country, what could be more relaxing than going home to the city? Did you see a raft at the river? <laughs> Bill made it for us. Next weekend, we take a relaxing raft trip. Won't that be fun? <laughs> <laughs>